Live from Orlando, Florida, you're listening to the Orlando Magic HQ podcast, the voice of Magic fans. Join us every week for a unique fan perspective on all of the latest Magic news and updates. The show starts now. What's up, Magic fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Orlando Magic HQ podcast brought to you by DraftKings and part of the Basketball Podcast Network. We're your hosts, Al, myself, Anthony. Today is actually Thursday night. You'll be re- you'll be hearing this. This will be released Friday, March 10th, but we're recording this right after the unfortunate loss against the Utah Jazz. Magic ended up falling 131 to 124 in a really, really tight matchup against the Utah Jazz. And um, in today's episode, we're going to break break down the last um, the last week in games and kind of review that. Magic is slammed in the face with injuries all over again after, what, enjoying maybe a, a week or so of of a clean sheet on the injury report? That if was that. Short-lived. <laughs> if that. Um, and then kind of talk about where the Magic go from here, man. There's The teams in front of us have been losing, but – so have we. So it's really adjusted the way that, you know, the the outlook is of our um, potential of trying to make it into the play-in. So we're, we're going to break that down. But before we get into that, a lot of news is coming out of the NBA world. And normally we stay around the Orlando Magic topic for for the most part. Um, but I, I figured, man, let's it'd be a good idea to hit some hot topics. Um, and and the really the biggest thing that we've been hearing is the the whole John ja Moran or, um, ordeal about you know him flashing a gun in a nightclub on on IG live, and then we hear a crazy story about Sean Kemp, um, you know partaking in some drive by festivities. But um, <laughs> you know just just real quick, the the outlook of it, man. John ja Moran is a player that is um, was up and coming man what i mean by up and coming i mean he's a he's a young superstar um just got his signature deal with nike brand new release of his shoe memphis grizzlies making a whole bunch of noise man and it's it's refreshing in a way to see a team like the memphis grizzlies um able to rebound rebound back from you know the team that they had with zach randolph and marcus saul and and the grind um, and for them to kind of re-image that whole entire team to see what they have, um, a small market team, very similar to the Orlando Magic, and then to make the noise that they make, is unfortunate um, for kind of what, what what it is that they're they're going through. And and my question to you, Al, is, um, man, what what is going? What in your opinion, what is going on with Ja? Like I, I don't want no deep dive analysis, uh, none of that. But just from your initial perspective, what the hell is going on with John Morant? I don't know, man. But if you're an NBA fan and you've been watching, you know the Grizzlies and the way that they've been acting as a team, not even just Jabba himself, but the team as a whole. It's like they won some games last year. They made it to the playoffs, high seed. That got to their head, man. All of a sudden, they started talking about building a dynasty and, sh- you know, knocking down the, the Warriors, which, by the way, they did tonight, believe it or not. So that was good for them. <laughs> but I don't know, man. It all started from there. And then you started hearing things about Ja with, you know, getting involved with a young kid, 17-year-old kid, punching the kid, flashing a gun to the kid, then getting into something at a mall recently with his mom and also kind of showing a gun there. And then on top of that, something happened between Memphis and Indiana Pacers recently, and some sort of laser was pointed towards the Indiana Pacers bus. And then if that's not enough, this fool knows that he's being investigated. He's being looked at for all these crimes that are going on. I'm going to say how I believe it happened, man. This dude was drunk after yeah, the game. A hundred percent. Right? At a strip club. Let's not call it a bar. Let's not call it a club. He's at a strip club at 2 a.m., whatever time it was. And you go live on IG, bro. Like, not, it's different <laughs> if a fan recorded you and they posted wow. it online. Oh, man. It yeah, it's wild. Oh, man. It's, it's an accident. I'm so sorry. Now, nah, man, you can't get out of this one. You yourself went live on IG on your IG, which has millions of followers. And it's all right. You're showing the girls in the back. You're drinking alcohol. Looks like Paul Pierce last year. But then on top of that, you flash your tiny little gun. Like, what is the point in that, man? You know that you're being investigated and you do that. And then what does he do the next day? He shuts down his IG, his Twitter. And the reasoning for all this supposedly is I'm going to take a mental break mental health. to deal 
to deal with my mental health issues. Yep. And not for nothing, man. Mental health is a serious issue. I'm not going to joke about that because it really, really is. But man, don't come here with that. You were at a strip club getting drunk after your teammates talked to you about the behavior the team was kind of seeing on the road and you pulled this off. So in my opinion, man, there's no excuses. Um, I feel bad for the kid. I think he needs to get help. But ultimately, he needs to understand who's around him, including his dad, which we've seen how he acts on the court, drinking and, and kind of promoting his son to act the way that he's been doing on the court. And I don't know if that carries off off the court. But did you see the video that they posted of him drinking at a plane also with his family? Yeah, I did. I did see that. He was drinking at Casa Amigos and he was, man, he was drinking, drinking. Like, yeah, it wasn't like people were trying to say like it's not it's not that big of a deal, but my man was drinking it like it was a Kool Aid. So that's the thing, man. So I know we don't want to go too far. We're, we're a magic podcast, but I will say this, man. For me personally, there's no excuse for that behavior. And if you're at the NBA, you got to look at it really closely. Um, how did that gun get to him that night? He must have brought it from him on the team plane, onto the team locker room. I don't know how it happened, but you got to investigate this. And my prediction is, man, this got to be at least a 50-game suspension. Like, I don't think we'll see Ja this year, and I don't think we see him early next year. Um, it's too many things going on with this kid, and he tops it off with this. What are your thoughts on it? Yeah, the police already investigated. They said that there wasn't enough evidence. I don't know. I don't – I'm I'm not – I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a police officer. Like, do what more evidence you need. Um, but apparently, it wasn't, you know, not enough evidence to to be able to file a claim. Which, you know, fortunately, you know, you you it, he missed a bullet, man. And no pun intended, but he he missed a bullet on that one because, you know, it could have been a lot worse than what it was. And I I think what makes the situation even worse because obviously he has an issue. He has a problem, whether it's alcohol, whether it's uh, you know, mental issues, what, whatever it is, pressure, whatever it is, there's, there's obviously an issue, but the fact that the team has come out and said that we've tried to address it numerous times. Um, and even the night before that incident, Steven Adams, um, you know, made comments about like trying to be professional when we're, you know, going on the road and playing because they're not playing well on the road. So it's, it's, a veteran guy, especially a dude like seven Stephen Adams, is trying to bring everyone together. You're supposed to be the leader. You're supposed to be the head honcho. You're the you're the face of the franchise, um, and you allow for that to kind of you know get to the level that it got. Man, it, it's it's super unfortunate, and you know it's it's a reminder that you know it's like you you when I when I think about that, I think about the Orlando Magic in the sense where the Magic have always gone after good character that's like the number one thing that they harp on they've harped on it for so long and we've always talked about like man i I wish that the magic were a little more grittier uh i I wish that the magic you know had a little more attitude to them and and you know there there's there is a flip side to that unfortunately and you know the the memphis grizzlies here they're getting the negative impacts to that i feel bad for the grizzlies i feel bad for their fan base um, you know, part of me kind of feel bad for job, ja, man. It's 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 a reminder that these dudes are they're, they're kids, man. They're little ass kids, and they're they're trying to figure out the the fame, the pressure. Like, I, I it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate it all is. around. But it's 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 stupid. I think Stephen A. Smith, you know, had the the best perspective, which is the people around him need to do a better job at putting Ja in check. Like Mm -hmm. you, you have to, and and the words that he said, you have to be able to protect the asset and all the people that he has around them, you know, that nobody telling him or, or no one stopping him or no one challenging anything, you know, they're, they're harming, they're harming the bag. And, you know, you have someone like, or a company like Nike that just got rid of a problem in Kyrie Irving and (laughs) just adopted a brand new problem in, in John Moran. And the unfortunate thing about it is what is Nike going to do? They're not going to drop him. They literally just signed him. They Mm -hmm. just produced his signature sneaker. They did all this marketing. Like it's, it's impossible to do that. And it's not a good look. And the response that they had, cause they came out with an official response. It's something a little basic. It was like three, four sentences that we're, we're going to support. We stand with John Moran, something along those lines. And you know, it's, it's tough, but you know, at, at the same time, it's, it's, I'm glad that we don't have that issue. When you look at the players on our team, Franz, Markel, Paolo, you know, 
Paulo has had his issues in in college with the whole DUI incident that he had, right? But you know, you you can kind of have a sense that at the core of it, man, the, these these kids are good kids, man. And we, you know, I don't I don't have fear. You don't have fear. The fan base doesn't have fear that we would run into any of these issues. Who knows? Anything can change four or five years from now. Mm-hmm. Maybe Franz Wagner out of nowhere goes crazy and turns into <laughs> to some wild animal that we don't that we don't know that we you know it's still too early on in his career um but man it's unfortunate for them glad it's not us dealing with it yeah man but out of all people i don't think it'll be france i i, I could take my it could be anybody else but france but I, I don't see it happening <laughs> <laughs> and then the whole sean kemp situation man like like a, a part of me was kind of like Man, should we should we post this? Like a part of me felt bad posting it. Like I it, consciously I, I didn't have a heart to to, to post it just because one Sean Kemp didn't really spend too much time with the magic. So it's not mm-hmm. really like magic news. But um man, it's it's at first we we get the 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 watch notification, the watch bomb, wolge bomb that says, you know, Sean Kemp was a was, you know, a, a part of an incident of a of a you know, shooting that was a drive-by shooting, and we're like, "What, Sean Kemp? Like, my man going crazy out of out of nowhere? That's like mad random." Um, but then later we find out from you know a lawyer that it was, uh, I guess, self-defense. What was it? The report that you read? Yeah, supposedly uh, something was stolen from his car, including his car. Maybe I don't know all the details. I read it quickly at the Magic game. But bottom line is, he followed the guy. Supposedly found them. And then when he went to retrieve his things, um, they started shooting at him. So he shot back in self-defense. That's that's what the lawyer's claiming. Who knows? But definitely not a good look for the NBA this week, man. The Jai issue, no Sean Kemp issues with guns. If anything, this makes even the Ja news even worse. Like you have to, as an NBA uh, ownership group, you have to take this more seriously now. Because again, it's, it's impacting you now twice in one week, dealing with guns, with all the issues that we're having in this country with guns. So it's like... Not a good look for the NBA this week for sure. And and man, that's that's the tough part, man. Is is the kids are impacted by it because all the kids know about it. Uh just you you think about all the kids that look up to John Moran, they're massive John Moran fans. You know, how many this is someone that that really took the whole gritty dance and, and kind of made it like part of part of him and, and what they do. Like when you think about the gritty, you you know, there's other people out there, right? Other athletes, but John Moran's one of them. You have these kids that are, are rocking John Moran jerseys and doing the gritty. And, you know, now they can't see John Moran play. Why isn't John Moran playing? You know, it's it's impossible not to hear these news. So, you know, again, un, unfortunately all around, man, hopefully, hopefully the NBA finds a way to kind of put a stop to it because right now, man, it's, it's you're getting towards the end of the year. And if, if he really is out, like I don't, I don't personally, I don't see him playing the rest of the season. I don't, I don't see no, him playing in the postseason. No like I don't, mm-hmm. I don't see him returning at all. I think personally, it would be irresponsible by the mm-hmm. NBA to let that happen. I think it'd be sure. irresponsible by the Memphis Grizzlies to let it happen. Um, but it would have been nice to see them battle out in the West. We're talking about a dude that in the beginning of the season was talking about, I'm fine in the West, man. There's, I'm afraid of nobody. You know, I like I like that energy. I don't agree with it, but I like that energy. I like that type of fight. And now we're not we're 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 you know that that moment's been stolen from NBA fans. But exactly, we won't harp on it too much. Just wanted to add that in there. And man, let's transition to to Magic basketball. So do we have to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> kind of do, kind of do, man. It's 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 our therapy session. I need to, I need to. Let's do it. So Let's do it. we can start off with the win against the Charlotte Hornets. It's always good to get a win um, against Steve Clifford. Like it, it just makes me feel good inside. As much as I like Steve Clifford, um, but then Magic during a homestand, which I I I think we played pretty well at home, mm-hmm. just could not get a win. We are now. After going win loss win loss for a good little stretch, we go on a losing streak. We lose against Damian Lillard and the Portland Trail Blazers, one twenty two one nineteen, which was a massive loss because the Wizards also um, lost that night. So that would have been a great opportunity for us to be able to move up. Um, you know, trying to get into that play in, and then you know, lost against Milwaukee. The part about this Milwaukee game that 
you know really upsets me is the fact that they didn't have Giannis, they didn't have Drew Holiday. You're really going against Brooke Lopez and Chris Middleton, and they destroyed us. I'm talking about like it was ugly from beginning to end. That's what they do, man. That's what they do. Some way, somehow, they find a way to always, always beat us. Um, but to your point, heading into that game, you're like, all right, we lost against Portland. Tough game. Came down to the wire. Now we're playing Milwaukee in a second game at home. We got to bounce back. Washington lost. We can stay alive if we win against Milwaukee. And to your point, no show. They did not show up to that game. Milwaukee simply kicked our butts from the beginning to the end. Um, and that made it back-to-back losses, which you can uh, afford this time of the year when you're trailing in the play-in race. Um, and then to follow it up tonight, unfortunately, the Jazz come to town, a team that is not really trying to win too much, and they drop 131 points on us, and they beat us 131-124. Um, some questionable things in this game, which I'm sure we'll talk about here in a few minutes, but something strange I, I will say overall that I'm noticing and this it's this weird trend with Coach Mosley. I like him. I like what he brings to the locker room. I like the what he's building culture wise in Orlando. But I will say, man, some of the substitutions that he's making down the stretch when the game is on the line do not make too much sense. I cannot recall right now at this moment. I forgot. But against the the Blazers, he made a weird substitution late in the game that I'm like, why is he doing that? And we ended up losing the game. Yeah, it but was, then tonight um, it was it was Caleb Houston. Yes, 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 yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, that made no sense. Like Caleb is a dude that has barely played, has barely been in the rotation for that matter, and he's playing to close the game when we were trailing by like one point at that point, and we ended up losing that game. And then tonight, one thing the Jazz were doing was they were big. They had Kessler, Marketing, Olenek, and for some reason, we come back, come all the way back. We're trailing by one once again, and he brings in Gary Harris instead of Goga, who was playing well, was rebounding well, and we went small. And his excuse was we wanted to play with more speed and take advantage of Kessler being matched up against Paolo so much and kind of take that the speed advantage. Well, that didn't go well. Right after that, they got an offensive rebound and won. And then after that, they took advantage going inside every time and finishing inside. So three losses in a row. We're now trailing the Wizards by four and a half games. They didn't play tonight, but if they win tomorrow, it'll be five games, five and a half. In my mind, is over. The playing kind of chase and the, that dream of it, unfortunately, in my opinion, it's it's done with. But what about you? Do you think we have a chance still, or are you kind of turning the page into the lottery and what's to come? Yeah, so before I answer that, one of the things that kind of pissed me off a little bit was I saw a video of Giannis um, on the bench, and he was eating, like, popcorn out of like an Orlando magic box, like Mm -hmm. while, while we were playing against Milwaukee and, you know, apparently he was out due to a non COVID related, um, you know, illness. illness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is the reason why he was out. Yeah. He looked perfectly fine throwing popcorn in the air and catching it with his mouth and, and all that, man, it's getting to a point where these teams are not, they're not taking us serious again. That's, and that's, that's the part that really upsets me is that people aren't, are respecting us in that way. The Magic, listen, you can blame it on a lot of factors. You can blame it on the fact that we're we're struggling with injuries. You can blame it on the fact that we don't have a starting center. Um, you can blame it on the fact that we don't have Jonathan Isaac. You can blame it on a multitude of different things. Um, youth is definitely going to be one of them. In my opinion, it's, it's at the point where these the, these are way more games that Paulo has ever played. Paulo is still playing really good basketball. Um, but – Man, this has been a really, really long season for these young guys. And I think that no matter what ends up happening, playing, no playing, you know, you can at least applaud the fact that this was a season that was way better than anyone has, has um, you know, expected. We, when we talk about Coach Mose and, and everyone's issue with Coach Mose has always been the rotations, right? Um, but at the same time, man, he's, he's, taking, he's taking what he has, dealing with all these injuries, and he still found a way to to have a a more successful season than he did last year. There, there's there's growth. There's people that are talking about it's time for a coaching change. I don't think the front office is thinking that. I don't even think it's crossing their minds. I think that you know how how do you how do you keep a coach accountable with him dealing with all these injuries and he still ends up having a better season? Yeah, you can you can put you know the the success at the feet of Markel Fultz. 
and him finally being injured and or him finally being healthy. And you can put it the success of Paolo Bancaro and, and Franz Wagner. Like you can do that. Coach Most, man, he he definitely deserves some of the credit, whether you agree with some of the things that he doesn't. Um in terms of playing, yeah, I agree with you, man. I, I think that it's at a point where it's just there's not enough game to really fight back and really make it there. I think that the Magic are still going to look into these games and try to fight it out as much as they can, take every game as serious as they can and try to win these games. Um, but I think ultimately it's just it's just too late, unfortunately. Like we, the Magic could not afford – to go on a losing streak, to lose against Portland, Milwaukee, and Utah. You just can't. You can't allow that. And those are all your home stretches. That's your home stretch. Got to be able to, to protect home. And, you know, fortunately, we weren't able to do that. It's um, it's sad because everyone's really looking forward to it. But the bright side is we're still in a really good position, guys. It's like we're still, like, what, the fifth best lottery odds? And this is with us having a better record than we did last year. Um, I, I think the Magic are still in, in a good position to get better uh, for next season, and that's getting better with development. Six, 15 games is still a lot of games, man, for these guys to really to really hone in and, and still get better at, at their craft and, and play these meaningful games. Like this Utah game felt like a battle. Like there was moments where it felt it had a playoff-like feeling. You know, that Portland game had a playoff-like feeling. It was, we lost 119-122. to 122. It was a tight game. You know, and today, in today's game against Utah, you had Paolo drop 26, Franz drop 24, Markel Foltz 25, Jalen Suggs was 17 off the bench. And we still lost, man. We lost, st- we lost by dropping 124 against Utah. We dropped 123 against Milwaukee, 119 in Portland. And 117 in Charlotte. You remember that stretch with Vooch and Evan Forney and Aaron Gordon when we were barely hitting 100 points? Yep. Struggling to hit 100 points. Struggling. And now we do it like it's nothing. It's a walk in the park. We're just you know what the issue is? More. Yeah, exactly. That's the problem. Defensively, this team has kind of lost its identity. I don't know what happened after the All-Star break because that was our strength. We're playing so well defensively. And then something changed after the all-star break. And all of a sudden we can't stop anybody. Like legitimately, they're dropping 130 a night on us. And you hear that number clearly. 130 points we're giving up easily every night, 125, 124. Like you're not gonna win many games, unfortunately, allowing so many points. You can blame it on youth, you can blame it on, like you said, young guys that are being tired because they haven't played as many games. Think of Jalen Sucks. This is this is the most he's played, I think. Since he's been in the NBA consecutively, he's played like two months now actually playing basketball. Like he hasn't been hurt. Paolo, to your point, he's played already more games than he played in college last year. So his legs are pretty much giving up on him. Um, so it's to be expected, but it's just it's it's painful, man, because to your point, if we had won two of these three at home at least, all of a sudden we're only trailing the you know the Wizards by two and a half, three games. We're, we're still in it. But all of a sudden you say five games, I don't see it, man. And to your point, yes, we currently have the fifth best odds. The only teams that are close to us right now to reaching the, the to reaching us for that position is Indiana and Chicago. They're they're both at 30 wins right now, but we have a three and a half game advantage with 15 to go. I don't see us blowing that. Um, so with that being said, I don't know if the front office will get involved. If the, the memo was sent to mo- mostly already, like, hey, we want to keep those odds where they are, because get, don't get a twist, man. We have a really really good chance of jumping up. Believe it or not. Fifth to fourth and third best odds, it's not that big of a difference. Remember the new lottery system that is in place? We can mm-hmm. easily jump up in this draft. And as we know, there are three, four, five, six, ten names of guys that can really help this team, especially the top tier guys. So if the Magic can some way somehow jump up in the lottery and still get the Bulls pick to be somewhere in the six to eight range, it's going to be another great summer for the Magic. Just thinking about the draft, not even thinking about free agency or trades just adding two prospects or adding this assets that they can trade to potentially get a star or move up in the draft. Who knows? But we're playing with house money right now. That's what I keep saying to myself. We win. Right. Amazing. But we're still staying alive in this playing thing, even if it's, if it's just a wish. But if we lose, hey, we, we keep up protecting our lead 
here heading into the lottery uh, in a couple of months. So it just sucks because like to your point, we were all excited. We were all kind of feeling, hey, we have a chance of doing this, especially the way that we're playing heading into the All-Star break. Like it felt like we were going to build momentum um, and make a good run at this. But at this point, if you ask me, man, uh, it may be better to simply focus on the bigger picture. Yeah, so there's no catching up in terms of tanking, right? There's no catching up to Charlotte. Charlotte's at 22 wins. We're not going to catch up. Detroit is at a disgusting 15. Houston also 15. San Antonio has 16 wins. There's no catching up. Mm-hmm. Let's let's just be honest. Um, what I'd like to see or what I like seeing is Chicago is right there at the 11th spot. They're at... 30 wins and they're right behind the Washington Wizards who was at the 10th spot with 31 wins or they're one game behind. So when I'm looking at that, I'm looking at a Chicago team that they're going to be playing their ass off. They want to make sure that they make it into the playing. That is great news for the Orlando magic because you know, they had their, the pick for next season is um, what was it? Top four protected. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's, it's good news on, on that front. And that's exactly what it is that, that we want to see. So I, I think it's one of those things where if we win, it's great. If we lose, it really doesn't impact us too much. We're kind of just in stationary in, in those regards. But honestly, man, I, I want the magic to to win as many games, man. Get into the get into the 30s. Like I love it if they'd be if they would be able to be at 33, 34 wins. I, I think that'd be a, a massive, a massive boost for the team. Yeah, I think for me personally, uh, I think if we get to 30 wins, so think about this for a second. We have 15 games left. I'm saying if we go 3-12, and 12, that's a massive improvement. Like that would mean that we win 30 games. Again, back in October, we said it. If we get to 30-32, that's huge. We will, we will take that all day long. At this point, I'm still believing in that. The fact that if we can win 30-32 games, that means going 5-10, and 3-12, and 12, I'm okay with that because let's be realistic. Again, I, I, this will never be admitted by our front office, our coaching staff. They are watching the standings, man. They are watching who's getting close, who's getting far, and they know that Indiana was getting close to the fifth best odds. OKC for a second was also kind of losing a little, a few games and getting close to us. I don't know. All of a sudden, Gary Harris started missing games. Wendell Carter started missing games. And here we are. Now that lead is kind of built up a little bit again, and we have some some breathing room. Again, I understand it though, man. The way I said it to one of my friends that at the game is, do you rather play for the next four weeks or do you rather pl- play knowing that for the next five to seven years, you have a great team in place? So give me that all day long. Give, give me building up for the next five to seven years all day long after seeing that what you have in store already in stock in this team is good enough. So keep building on it. The, the, the only issue with that type of mindset, bro, is that at some point, the Magic are going to have to like stop looking at the draft. Granted, that is not that is not this year, right? But exactly. at some point, because then what's going to end up happening? We're going to start looking at we're going to start feeling the same way when it comes to the Denver Nuggets, right? So it's it's because we we still have their draft pick, their first round draft pick. So it's like I'm tired of worrying about the draft. Like I, I'm 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 at a point where all right, this is this is it. Like no more after this one. This is the last one. I feel like I said that last season. You know what I mean? So, um, man, it, it, it is what it is. This is where we're at. There's only so much that is in their control. And unfortunately, I put the blame on Jonathan Isaac. I'm joking, but I'm kind of serious, right? Jonathan Isaac, I feel like he gave us an, an extra lift that that we didn't know that we needed. Not that we know, not that we didn't know that we needed, but he was he was that bonus man. He was that that one wild card that we had in the back pocket that we're we're waiting to use right at the right time, man. When we're fighting for that play in, um, but unfortunately, Jonathan Isaac is going to miss the remainder of the season after going through a season ending injury to repair a torn left adductor muscle. So Isaac, who was only able to play eleven games with super heavy minute restrictions, barely playing about ten minutes a game goes down and injures the same leg um, that he's been dealing with. So unfortunate news, Jonathan Isaac, the, I feel like the minute that this news came out, um, it, it felt like a gut punch. It, it felt like yeah, it was like a very sad moment in the Magic community. We had a Spaces. Um, uh, shout out to Bryce, who who kind of ran that Spaces for us. And 
and kind of getting the reaction from the fan base. It was a lot of people. It, it honestly, it felt like a funeral. Like it felt like the amount of sadness that I've heard in people's voices and in their tone. It was brutal for them. It was brutal mm-hmm. for me. It was brutal for everyone because you feel bad for the guy, right? This is a dude that's been fighting to get back for the last two and a half years. Everyone has been slandering his name. I'm sure he's heard everyone say that, oh, he's, it's, it's him. He doesn't want to play basketball. He's too focused on this, this, and that. He finally is able to get back on the court after people saying he's not the same Jonathan Isaac. He can't get back to the level that he was at. We get a glimpse of it. We get a glimpse of it. The limited minutes that he was playing, it looked like the old Jonathan Isaac. It looked like the old new Jonathan Isaac because this was a veteran version of mm-hmm. what we received from before. And the minute that we start to see it a bit, it unfortunately goes down. And and one of the things that I hate about it is that we really didn't like we didn't we didn't we had to find out towards the very end, right? He started missing game one, game two, game three, and we're kind of like, all right. Something isn't right. Something is going on. Long behold, season-ending injury. So my question to you, Al, is what 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 do the Magic go from here? Like, we've already waited two and a half years for this dude to return, and he comes back, limited minutes, 11 games, already injured. Where do the Magic go from here? That's a really tough question, man. And, I, and I've been fighting with that myself for the last few days since we heard the news. It was last Friday that we that we got the update on it. Um, it's tough because you, you you mentioned two and a half years, but by the time August hits, so before next season, it'll be three years since he tore his ACL at the bubble. And in three years, we've seen J.I. play 11 games. And those 11 games... Like you mentioned it, heavy minutes restriction. The most that he, play, that he played was like 14 minutes. So all that to say, the Magic have done everything possible to keep this guy healthy, to, re- to make sure that he recovers. Remember the whole thing about like, make sure that he's, he's balancing is there, that, that the strength on both legs are the same, and all, this, all these things that they were doing. And that's why it, it expanded so much, the, the, the return to the court. Even then, the setback with the hamstring issue. Now another setback with the abductor issue. Man, it's a lot of different things. You, you think about the ankles when he was young, like his first couple of years with us. That was the issue. Then the knees, and now the abductor. Like it's major injury after major injury with this guy. But I will say this: if I know the front office, they're not going to give up. They've already invested a lot of money into JI, into his recovery, into into what he can potentially be. Into your point, when he's been on the court, he's shown that he can make a difference. So next season, he's under contract. Only $7.6 million is guaranteed up until January 10th of next year. All that to say, they have the rest of the summer. Hopefully, he should be 100% ready by October because this, this injury should take about four months to recover fully. So that would be, let's call it April, May, June, July, August 1st. He should be back on the court getting ready for the new season. Plenty of time to ramp up for training camp. If he is back and he is healthy and he can manage to play and he's in the rotation and all this thing, good. They'll guarantee his contract. Great. The tricky thing is that following year, he has zero dollars guaranteed, meaning the Magic can cut him completely free and let him go. The opposite would be he cannot make it to training camp. He, he's still lingering with some issues. He gets hurt again before January 10th. You can cut him for $7 million. So the Magic have a free look, I would say, between now and and January 10th to see, hey, what do we really have here? Can he make it back or can he not? So I think the Magic will do that. They'll give him one more chance to say, hey, we'll, we'll, we'll keep trying here, but it's running out of time. My concern is, man, as a fan base, we are tired of saying, hey, GI is coming. He's going to make a difference. He's going to come and be on a minutes restriction. When is he coming off of that? Like, it's this topic that just keeps kind of hanging above our heads that I know a lot of us just want to get rid of. It reminds me of Mo Bamba. When is he going to grow up? When is he going to get his IQ better? When is he going to play harder? Is it going to happen? It never did. We, we basically let him go. So in your opinion, are we at that point with J.I. where you just want to get rid of that topic, that discussion, and focus on Paolo, Franz, Markel, the rest of the guys? Or do you want to give this, this this guy one more chance and say, hey, let's see what we got with him. 
come October. So the reason why we didn't end up trading Terrence Ross, we didn't end up trading RJ Hampton, we didn't end up trading Mo Bamba, it's because we wanted to do right by the players, right? I don't see there being any different with Jonathan Isaac. If anything, I think that if the Magic decided to waive Jonathan Isaac, right, let's say that we want to take advantage of the, the really big discount that we would get by waiving him, um, I think that it would devalue everything that we just did with trying to create a reputation of being able to take care of players. I think that what has happened, Jonathan Isaac is super unfortunate. I think a lot of people feel for him. Um, and I think that if we did do that, it would be a negative impact. Like there would be no reason why we didn't trade. It would be a waste at that point. I think the magic, I, I, I agree with you. I think you're right. I think the magic will stand by his side. Um, for this type of injury, they were saying, what, it's recovery time of three, four months. That will put us right in the middle of um, the off season. Um, mm-hmm. Who knows? Maybe his, he is ready by, by training camp. I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, part of me was saying we were having a conversation um, prior to with, uh, with Steven from the close-up, and we we're, we're talking about, man, I, I, would, I would be okay with him not playing anymore. Like, cut him. Not, not cut him, but like shut them down. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've seen enough. We've, we see, we know what we got, right. Fortunately, he got hurt and <laughs> they, they shut him down, you know, re- regardless. It is what it is. I think the magic stick with them. I think he does make a return. Um, <clears throat> the, the only issue is that the, you have zero confidence that he can stay healthy, like zero confidence yep. that he can stay healthy. It, it is impossible. You see a player like Franz who, you know, badly sprained his ankle against the Charlotte Hornets, and we're like, oh, man, it, it's, that's it. He's going to be out for a minute. Dude's ready to go the next game. Jalen Suggs falls every single play. Every play this man is on the floor. <laughs> Somehow he, he gets up, he shakes it off, he's ready to go. Like, these dudes are Ironmen. Jonathan Isaac is not not that unfortunately man it's it's he's made he's made out of glass and it's it's man he he brings so much value it is insane like you you think of what Jonathan Isaac impact to this team would be and it's scary like it's Mm -hmm. scary and I felt like he was just finally getting into the groove of it he was finally getting accustomed to it and it's uh you know it gets it gets cut short yeah, man. And like I said, I do want to mention you know, the, the personal side of things. I don't even want to imagine the moment that the Magic medical staff told you, hey, by the way, that little pain you're feeling ends up, ends up being a end of season surgery for you again. Like, I don't even want to imagine like, what that moment was like That's because rough. he was on a podcast with Dante and the rest of the, the Magic um, media group recently. And he said it like when he got the news um, of the knee injury last time he didn't want to see people for like a month. Like he went into hiding kind of for about a month. So this time again, you're finally playing, you're getting a, a good feeling. The team is fighting for, for a playing tournament seed and you go down again. Like, I don't even want to know that. So I do hope that the person that he is, he's an amazing individual that he's doing. Okay. That, he, that he's taking this with positive as positive as he can um, because he's an amazing guy. So I don't want fans listening to this thinking, Oh my God, you guys are going at JI attacking him. Like, no, 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 no. The person the person that he is, man, we are all with him. We're praying for him. We're hoping that he recovers and that he's back with us. But when you think about a business decision, you think about a team and, and what do we do going forward? I will say, man, drafting Paolo kind of changed my approach the way I view J.I., right? Because same position. 100%. But Paolo, I'd say, number one pick. So the person, I hope he's doing well. And I do hope that we see him in October. I don't think we're going to cut him. The only way we cut him is... If an agent calls you and tells you, hey, man, I like what you guys are building in Orlando, and my guy wants to go play for you, and you realize, shoot, I don't have the money to pay him, but if I cut your eye, I do, and that guy will make a difference here in Orlando, then you do it. But other than that, man, which I don't think it will happen this offseason, but other than that, the Magic will give this guy one more chance, and it's worth it. It's worth the risk. If you tell me, hey, we can sign J.I. as a free agent to give him a look and see what we have, I would do it. If I was a team looking at potentially what GI could be. So let's see what happens, man. But it's just unfortunate that things have played out the way that they have with him. Um, but what can we do? Yeah, I mean, listen, if if the magic did decide 
to make a move like that. Jonathan Isaac can't be mad at the Magic. They've been super uber patient, right? They've done every they they've every step of the way. They made sure that <clears throat> there, there was no fear of Jonathan Isaac being traded. Jonathan Isaac getting waived. Jonathan Isaac nothing, right? Um, at some at some point, man, the Magic and you know, they they need to be selfish, man. They they need to make the best decision for them. I, I do feel like the best decision for them will be to kind of hold off and kind of play this out because it's not as serious as a, as an injury as the other ones that he's dealt with. So there's still time to figure things out. I think what could change also is what we end up doing in the draft. What if we don't, what if, what if, what if we don't grab a, a guard? What if we do draft an, another dual forward? Like who, who knows what the magic end up doing? What if we draft a player like Whitmore, you know? So it's, it's, I think that this team is going to look so much more. Um, obviously, the team is going to look different after the draft, but I think we're going to have a better idea of what this team will look like seeing what the Magic will end up doing this offseason. This offseason, in my opinion, is by far the most important offseason that we've had in the last five years, and that's with us drafting the number one pick. Just because Paolo franz like these things all worked out in our favor but man part part of me is saying like yeah we can we can credit the front office for being geniuses but we got lucky man let's let's be 100 percent honest we got lucky like what if jabari smith was really that dude what if you know uh uh franz wagner didn't pan out like and and we relied on just jalen sucks you know what I mean? Like we we've got a lot of things to kind of, you know, go in our favor. And this is a year that you're you're finalizing it. Like I feel like your core is now fully set. Like you're not expecting nothing more from this core after this draft. This is this is it. This is the end. You're looking at that, you're looking at this draft, you're thinking about two people. You're thinking about Franz, you're thinking about Paolo, and you're seeing you're seeing what players can I add to this team that's going to fit best next to these two guys? And that's whether or not the Magic even decide to keep both of those picks. So it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. And I'm I'm excited for the ride, man. I can't. Part of me can't wait for the season to be over. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but it's true. And I will say, to, you said it earlier, like you're done with this drafting and, and building through the draft. You're, you're over it. And I will say, this is why it is over. It's because you already found two guys to build around. You have... Com- core players that fit into what they're doing. Not 100%, but you guys like Jalen Suggs has playing better. A ton of potential there still. Markel playing really well as a point guard. Wendell. So you have a foundation. Now to your point, it's who can we add around these guys? And guess what? It's not just a draft. We have about, what is it, 30, $40 million that we could potentially have for free agents to add to this team. And you got to add shooting, man. You have to add shooting because that's our biggest weakness. And also, that would help expand the floor more for Paolo and Franz to create and do what they do best, which is attack the hoop. Um, so it's a massive offseason, but to your point, it's got to be one that's adding final touches to this roster, not let's draft guys to see if we can get a start. Like, I think you have already those guys in the roster. It's who can we add to them at this point. Yeah, so um, the, the Magic are facing Miami, San Antonio, and Phoenix next just looking down the schedule, <clears throat> these games don't get easier, man. You mm-hmm. got the Clippers. Um, we got the Clippers, Lakers, Wizards, Knicks, Nets, Grizzlies, Wizards, Pistons. But you know, nobody's worried about that. But ca- Cavs, Cavs, Nets, Miami, and then that's, that's the end of the season. So I'm I'm hoping that the Magic are able to sketch out a few more wins. Um Saturday's game against Miami should be a fun one just because it was so, so close the last time that we played. So we'll we'll see how that, that ends up going, man. Um, unfortunate loss against the Utah Jazz. Three-game losing streak. Got to get a win against Miami. Have to do it. And Saturday, man. Everyone is... Uh, Saturday night. My, yeah, Saturday, man. No, nobody in, in Miami. The Miami guys, they're, they're not going to take us serious. We got to be able to take advantage of it. Yeah, I got to ask you too. So before we wrap up, 
what are we looking forward to this last 15 games? So you personally, like we know playing's kind of fading away, but what are you look what are you watching games for this final 15 games? I'm really looking for two things and two things only. Paulo and Franz, I want them to shake off the rust. Um, I'm really keeping an eye on Paulo's three-point shot. That's that's really been my my focus. He struggled today on the, on the free throw line, but um, I'm hoping that he can get some rhythm there. I want to see consistency. I think that the if we were to end the season with a bright spot, that bright spot is going to be Paolo winning Rookie of the Year. That's going to be the bright spot. I would take a successful season, us winning more than 30 games, Rookie of the Year, two draft picks. It's not a bad way to end the season. 100%. For me, it's one word, man, health. I think, again, we've seen enough out of Franz, Paolo, Markel, the, the core, right? Two things, actually. So health is number one for me. I need the season to end, and this guy's be healthy heading into the summer. It's going to be massive for Jalen Sucks to be able to go into the summer knowing I can work on my three-point shot from April, April all the way up to September. Like That's all I got to do, shoot threes. Paolo, same thing. Um, Markel, same thing. He's hitting some now, finally, and, and looking confident shooting it. Keep working on that all summer. Be healthy. So that's number one. Number two for me is going to be Jalen Sucks. I think we've seen a lot of growth out of him. In the yep. last few months, he's hitting threes. He's playing hard. He has, he's finishing so much better at the, at the rim this year compared to last year. Keep building on that because we keep forgetting, man. We drafted this kid number five in the draft. And he was supposed to be the man, not Franz. If you can some way, somehow get something valuable out of out of Suggs coming into next year, being, I keep saying this, be Marcus Smart. Watch tape on him all summer. Study his game. Who was he before he became a three-point shooter? A defensive player. But once he started hitting threes, Boston became what they became. They started becoming a team that was competing for playoff seats, going deep runs in the playoffs. We need Jalen Sucks to be that guy for us. Paolo and Franz can carry the load scoring, but you got to hit that open shot when, when you got that open shot. He's doing it. So Jalen Sucks' growth is going to be huge for me over the last 15 games. And just health. That's that's all I can I can look forward to. Um, but so, to your point, too, I can't wait for the lottery, the draft, the free agency. That's, I mean... We love that stuff, right? That's what we live for yeah. you know, as, as basketball fans. But the, uh, the off season is still the 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 busiest time. 100%. Yes, I know our wives don't like it very much, but no, no. What my I, I told I told my <laughs> wife that hey, there's only 15 games left. She's like, oh no way, oh man, that's so sad. Like she, I'm like, in back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, you have no idea. There's still so much stuff that's gonna go down. So. Um, exciting stuff, man. We'll we'll see how how the magic end up um, finishes thing now. There's again 15 games left, man. It's gonna go by super quick. Um, and then here here comes the, the end of the season, playoffs, the finals, NBA draft, lottery, then NBA draft. So uh, a lot of things. E- even if things don't go our way, there's still a lot of things to be excited for. So oh yeah. On that on that note, man, appreciate you guys for listening. It's a wrap. Catch you guys next week. For all the latest magic news and updates, visit OrlandoMagicHQ.com and follow us on Instagram at OrlandoMagicHQ and on Twitter at OMagicHQ. Also, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and subscribe and leave a five-star review on your favorite listening platform.